Hi guys, I got another minute video for you on the Gyromitra Corfei. I wanted to introduce that to you. Before I get started though, I want to mention that the term false morale is not something that we want to continue to use. It hinders our growth. It stops us from being able to identify mushrooms down to species and it definitely creates a taboo or gives birth to a, a microphobia and misinformation on the Gyromitra species as well as a couple other genus of mushrooms. And there are some gyrometra here in southern Michigan and northern Indiana that are absolutely delicious. They're worth our time. There are some bad ones that we want to be careful of in the genus of gyrometra. Uh, a couple of them take special preparation in order to be able to consume. I don't know what that preparation is. I know there's some parboiling involved or whatever, but that can be researched. I recommend that you look up a group on Facebook called False Morales Demystified. Read over the rules and the guidelines and enjoy the learning. Uh, there's a great group of people there that really know what they're talking about. There's a lot of pinned articles that can be read and it will kind of change your perspective of the gyrometras and the guidebooks that have helped promote misinformation and or partial information concerning the genus. Now on the Corfei, is in a group called Gigas, and the Gyrometra Montana and the Gyrometra Corfei are indistinguishable aside from geographic location. And that geographic location, I'm told, is the Rocky Mountains. I've never looked for Gyrometra much west of me, but from the Rocky Mountains west, uh, this particular Giga is called Gyrometra Montana and when you're east of the Rockies it is called Gyrometra Corfei. It's a delicious mushroom. It's definitely worth your time. I'm gonna cut it for you and give you the details. Dawn got distracted by the trillium I see. Did she put her hand in poison ivy when she was doing that? <laughs> I don't know. So this isn't necessarily a great example, but the basic details on this Gyrometra corfei is there are folds, not honeycomb pits like you would see on a morshella. And the cap isn't connected to the stem. The stem, which I cut wrong, it wasn't much bigger than this right here. The stem is usually very short, but very thick and is not connected to the cap. So if I cut this in half, find a good place to cut this in half, you can see right here how the cap is not connected to the stem. We will cut this cap and stem and I'll show you the inside. You can see the stem right here. And you can see how the cap folds around itself and is not attached to the stem. These are folds, not honeycomb pits. So the distinguishing features are short, wide, and typically white stalk, but this isn't always the case. And a folded cap these are somewhat elastic in texture, just like a Morshella or a Helvella and even a Verpa. Uh, these don't get brittle as fast as Verpas do, but it's got kind of that elastic feel to it. Gyrometra corfei. I'm going to include a couple of plates identification plates in this video and I hope to show you one more delicious edible in these short minute videos before it's said and done. A Gyrometra genus has some delicious mushrooms worthy of the table here in Michigan. Also if you like the short fast identification videos if you go to my icon and you're subscribed on Found You Foraging and push on the icon 
you'll see playlists. And if you push playlists, Don has these short one minute videos, well, short minute videos listed as mushroom moment AD identifications. Mushroom moment identifications. Excellent. So we'll see you in the next one.